Is this thing on? Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And welcome to Wednesday's edition of the DCEU Daily. Yes, I have huge breaking casting DCEU Blue Beetle news. Sharon Stone from Basic Instinct. Yes, Basic Instinct is in talks to be cast to portray the villain of the Blue Beetle movie. And she's actually playing Ted Cold's wife, a version of Blue Beetle in the comics. Wow. So let's find out what this is all about. Then afterwards, we'll be talking about an IT prequel series executive produced by Andy Machete and Barbara Machete. And could this be a peaceful way for WB to remove the, the brother and sister duo out of the Flash movie? We'll discuss that after we discuss this. Sharon Stone in final talks to play villain in Warner Brothers DC's Blue Beetle by Anthony D'Alessandro of Deadline. We're hearing that the basic instinct actress will be playing Victoria Cold in Warner Brothers DC's Blue Beetle. Sharon Stone joins a growing cast in the Angel Menial Soto directed Gareth Dunet Alcoca scripted movie. John Ricard is producing, Oxolo Maridufia will play the title role, George Lopez, Adriana Barraza, Harvey Gillen, Bruno Marquezine, Damien Alcazar, Bilazar Exabar, and Elfida Carrillo also star. The movie was originally developed for HBO Max, but then, then surged to theatrical with an August the 18th, 2023 release date. Warner is killing at the box office of late, with the Batman, which crossed 672 worldwide, soon to hit 700 million. Stone is rep by AIG. She was Oscar nominated for Best Actress for 1995's Martin Scorsese movie Casino. She's also playing the mother of Kaylee Cuckoo's character of The Flight Attendant Season 2, Lisa Bowden, and starred on Ryan Murphy's Netflix horror series Ratchet as Lenore Osgood. We hear that the, she's, she's a new character created for the film. Now, rumours about an original character not from the comics was rumoured last week. And believed to be the wife of Ted Cold. Cold is the second Blue Beetle in DC lore. Could they be building a Blue Beetle cinematic universe with Ted Cold also becoming a Blue Beetle at the end of this movie? Very, very interesting. Or could Ted Cold be killed off in this movie, which would be slightly controversial. While Blue Beetle was launched originally by Charleston Comics in November of 1966, DC acquired the Charleston Heroes in the mid-1980s. In the DC pages, Cold was an industrialist, the owner of Cold Industries, and the implied subsidiary of Wayne Enterprises, a business he inherited from his father Thomas. The business went from being an R&D company to a scientific industry under Ted. He eventually joins the Justice League. So, this is very exciting, interesting news, but what's more juicier about all of this? That Sharon Stone was in talks a year or two ago to join the MCU. It looks like she won't be doing that. The DCEU got one over the MCU. And that sentence makes me extremely happy. So when, I mean, personally, this is my opinion, that I'm actually really happy now that we're getting a few more female villains in the DCEU. Um, we're getting Dame Helen Mirren, Lucy Liu as villains in Shazam! Fury of the Gods. And now we're getting a female original villain in the Blue Beetle movie. I think it's important that, the you know, when we're representing women, that we say, you know what, women can be villains too. If we're representing minorities, we can say, well, you know, sometimes it's okay to say that minorities can be villains too. Anyone could be a villain, anyone could be a hero. I think this is important. So this makes me happy too. Now, Sharon Stone, of course, is an icon of Hollywood. Basic Instinct is one of the most great classic movies 
in Hollywood history, probably for all the wrong reasons, but apart from her opening and closing her legs while she's being interrogated, Basic Instinct is actually a fantastic thriller by Paul Verhoeven. So this is a huge piece of casting for DC, and I'm very, very excited about it. So I'm very happy that Sharon Stone is part of the DCEU now, and with Ted, now we don't know if Ted Cord's actually gonna be in this movie, but it sounds like he would have to be. So as I say, maybe they're getting started the Blue Beetle extended cinematic universe, you know, kind of an offshoot of the DC extended universe, which again, is very exciting. It will be released next year, August, was it the 18th they said? Next year, so next year, is a bit of a huge year for the DCEU. We were hoping this year was a huge year, it kind of is, but not as huge as having all these movie re movies released in one year, but it's still extremely cool. So next year we've got Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, we've got the Flashpoint movie, and we've got Blue Beetle coming after that as well. So really three movies coming in a short space of time of each other is a really, really good thing. And it's really exciting. But we also must remember, on April the 11th, Warner Media becomes Warner Brothers Discovery Motion Pictures. This is important for all of you to understand that when you get new leadership, obviously plans can continue, but also plans can also be destabilized. Any current Warner Brothers project can also be canceled at any time under new leadership. The DC Extended Universe's multiverse strategy can be cancelled at any time under new leadership. And we're about to talk about that in a moment. Nothing escapes my gaze with what happens in the entertainment industry. And while searching for an article to read up this information about Sharon Stone, joining the DCEU as an original villain in the Blue Beetle movie, I found something that actually caught my gaze and it's very interesting. Now this is about an e It prequel series based on It Chapter 1 and 2 that were both directed by Andy Machete, who obviously directed the Flash movie. They finished on that movie, so I'm not interested in It. Obviously this is the DCEU daily just in case anyone says, why are you reading this? This pertains to the DCEU and its future. So let's give this a read. HBO Max is developing Welcome to Derry working title, a prequel series to the IT film franchise. According to sources, the project will be written and executive produced by Jason Fuchs and Andy Machete. Well, 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 a prequel written and produced by Andy Machete. Now, this is a bit sudden, isn't it? I mean, this is come out of nowhere, right? Now, obviously, he'll still be working on editing and, you know, obviously visualizing and the VFX of the Flash movie right now. So it's then very, very curious that Andy Machete will be co-producing and co-writing an it prequel, don't you think? Could this be a peaceful way for Andy Machete to be, to be removed from the Flash movie along with his producer sister, Barbara Machete, from the Flash movie to the IT prequel? In other words, has this IT prequel been created to give, you know, Andy Machete something to do so he's not angry, he's been a good soldier, they don't want him going publicly talking about what's going on with the Flash movie? If he has been removed from this Flash movie, this would be a very peaceful and very smart way to remove him from one project to the other. There is a Flash movie that's been directed by Andy Machete, but could the truth be here that we will never see that film? Now, obviously, there is evidence to the contrary. They are still releasing this Flash movie prequel comic on schedule. It's still going to happen. So that would say that this multiversal launch is still happening. But as I said a mere two minutes ago, with new leadership, 
and this merger. Anything can change at any time. Now, it's interesting because they spoke again to the guy playing Guy Gardner in this Green Lantern Corps TV series for HBO Max, and he said he can't say much, but he's now getting in Guy Gardner's shape. So it looks like that project is still going ahead. But with Discovery and Zaslav and his people not there yet, can they make any decisions on what stays and what goes? Because this is a very interesting point, everyone. We know that David Zaslav, the incoming CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery, and the current CEO of Discovery itself, moved to Hollywood straight away. I repeat this because I say this all the time, because it's important. He spoke to people, he, he wanted to get a gaze, he wanted information about what's going on at Warner Brothers. This is very important. All the projects you think you may be getting, in DC live action may not happen once Zaslav and Warner's Brothers Discovery motion pictures is formed. And we are mere weeks away of this happening. And I think this is a very, very curious situation that all of a sudden we have an IT prequel series co-produced and co-written by Andy Machete. This is not something, if this was just like, if him and his sister, his sister is executive producer, but he's not just an executive producer, he's a co-producer and a co-writer of this IT prequel for HBO Max. And as I say, this is all very sudden and very convenient, isn't it? I think this could be a sign that maybe the Flash movie that they've made may never be seen again. That maybe Zaslav and Warner Brothers Discovery are going to go down a different direction that maybe they're going to take down this multiverse strategy. Of course, like everything, I could be absolutely wrong. It's just a gut feeling. It's just a theory. That's what I'm here to do, to keep you apprised of situations, to let you know what I think. I spent six months in Hollywood, right? I know how these people work, how they maneuver themselves. So I just think this is a very curious situation. Now, it's interesting because the Blue Beetle movie seems to be going good guns. The Batgirl movie finishes production at the end of this month, which is tomorrow. Tomorrow, production on that movie will be finished. So it's very interesting to me to see what happens. It looks like certain things are A-OK -okay and certain things are being taken down. And obviously the question is, if they do do away with this multiversal strategy and this version of the Flash movie actually doesn't happen, what happens to the Flash movie? Now, I didn't speak about this yesterday on the DCEU Daily when I kind of responded to the breaking news that um, Ezra Miller was arrested in Hawaii. Now, what he did was pretty mediocre, but it's not good and he was arrested, so he, he committed a crime. But, you know, Hollywood celebrities do this shit all the time. It's not a big deal, and it doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to lose his job. But we have to ask the question, why has Ezra been acting this way? So let's look at the evidence. A couple of weeks before we were told that the Flash movie was delayed by seven weeks, Ezra became very, very erratic on his Instagram. He started talking about racism, with nothing wrong with that. But Ezra's not normally that vocal on his social media. He's not even on Twitter. He's on Instagram. And then we saw him screen capture an article that said that Ben Affleck's Batman wouldn't be seen again after The Flash. He scoffed and laughed on this screen capture. Could it be that he is so pissed off with this leadership of Warner Brothers Pictures and maybe that he knows that this Flash movie isn't happening, but he also knows that David Zaslav restored a Snyder work, say that again, will restore the Snyderverse, so maybe that's why he knows that Ben will return as Batman. We don't know, lots of things are happening. There's a fan campaign to make the Batfleck movie, even though it seems Ben Affleck isn't interested in doing that. But maybe these movements know something that we don't. Basically, they were outside the Discovery Studios with, the, with a van saying, make the Batfleck movie. Security actually called David Zaslav 
to have a look at it. So David Zaslav is aware of what's going on. So let's talk about this. If you're David Zaslav and you see the Oscar cheer moment being won by the Snyder Cup, that flash moment, if you're um, David Zaslav and you see these passionate fans, what are you thinking? One of the things you want to do as a new leader of a company that's consumed by the public is you want to make friends. You want to please the money. Who's the money? We are the money, everyone. So they're going to want to keep us happy. AT&T were trying to do the same thing, but this is a larger change of direction. This is huge. And big changes are coming to this company. So David Zaslav could be thinking about restoring the Snyderverse. Of course, all of this is so, so messy. The DCEU has always been messy because they decided to bring in an auteur director to lead a mainstream comic book franchise, everyone. And things are not just changing at DC. Yesterday, um, the studio who owns Sega or run the Sega live action universe have now confirmed that they're doing a Sega extended cinematic universe. You see, right now, superheroes are the trend, but we can already see that gaming, gaming live action movies will be the next trend. Gaming movies have failed mostly. Now, the first Sonic movie broke that mold and critics are loving Sonic 2. And I do believe that the Sega Cinematic Universe will defeat the MCU and everyone will start making gaming movies. So this is going to be very, very interesting because if superheroes are not the trend anymore and gaming movies are, then that's going to be interesting. What happens to superhero movies and shows? Well, they'll always be there, but these big studios will be directing their attention to these gaming movies. And I think this could change the mentality in Hollywood because, as you know from the first Sonic movie, it's like watching an old 90s, 80s movie. There's no kind of identity politics. It's just a good time at the movies. This could all save us from the so-called woke brigade. I hate that word myself, but I can't think of any other word to describe it. So the movie industry is changing all the time and they will move on to the next fab. And so the DC Extended Universe is a very complicated situation. As much as I love Snyder's movies and I love the Snyderverse and I want it restored and I love his Justice League movie, he should never have been put in charge on a central universe. Now what should have happened was, if they put Christopher Nolan in charge of this, they should have been clear. If you want Snyder and you want to do this thing, call it the DC Extended Elseworld or whatever. Right? You don't bring Zack Snyder in to run a mainstream union, universe. This is where the mistake was made, everyone. <coughs> Excuse me. And so now we've got this huge mess where we had Snyder doing Man of Steel, BVS, then they got rid of it. And then we released the Snyder Cut. And if we restore the Snyderverse, what happens to the Central Universe? Because the Central Universe uses the same Justice League as we saw in Peacemaker. They're going down this new direction. They're hoping to get away from Snyder with Peacemaker and the Flash reboot. And then Discovery coming. What do they do with this entire mess? Now, I've mentioned so many times after Justice League, for me, the DC Extended Universe would have been done null and void and I would have started again. But these people didn't do this. So I'm going to be very interested to see what Zaslav and Discovery, first of all, say when they first arrive and what they do later on. Because there may be changes at Warner Brothers Pictures, there may be, and a new kind of company set out in a DC Studios. But it's going to be a very long time to see what kind of plans they have for DC. Maybe it won't. Maybe they've mocked those plans up already and they'll announce them as soon as they arrive. I really don't know. But what I do know, the setup of the DCEU is very, very messy. It's been messy from the beginning. I stand by what I say every day. I still think DC makes art. 
and uh, Marvel, the MCU, make money. I believe the DC movies of today will stand the test of time. You know, Man of Steel, BBS, The Snyder Cut, Joker, The Dark Knight, Superman the movie. All these movies will be remembered. The MCU movies will barely be remembered. They'll be remembered for creating a successful extended universe. And that, my friends, will be the big difference. This has been the DCEU Daily, Wednesday's edition of the DCEU Daily with me, Mick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives, please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss this beautiful perfection. And I'll see you again later. So until we see each other again, goodbye. Au revoir. Alfie the same. See you again soon.